Well, hey there, my friends, and welcome into the third episode in our series on the five M's of subscription web design. Just to recap, M number one is the mindset. Okay, understanding that you're working with customers for the long haul and what that looks like in terms of your business and the kind of numbers that you need to get right for that to work. Secondly, we talked about the model and we looked at the various ways that you can actually work a subscription web design into your business and consider a, a model that's going to make the most sense for you. Now in this one, we're going to talk about the third M, which is the money. Okay. And I know, I know money is a interesting subject. Everybody wants more, but nobody likes to talk about it. Right. And, uh, so that's unfortunate. I hate that there's often a, a bad stigma associated with that. And a lot of people, um, especially in creative industries have trouble charging for their work. Now, not everyone, but a lot of people do. And I'm guessing if you're here, um, you might struggle with that. Maybe you don't, but you might. And if you do, then I want to give you a very important message. Without money, your business will die. Without money, your business will die. There is no doubt about that. Okay, if you're not managing your money well, if you're not profitable on projects, if you're not making enough money, if you're not charging enough, if, you're, if you don't have your expenses under control, then these are all things that will cause your business to die. And so if you want to have a hobby building websites for people, then I would encourage you not to charge them and still do a great job and you will have a wonderful and fulfilling hobby. However, if you want this to be a business, you must charge and you must charge well and you must be fair and you must not devalue yourself and undervalue yourself. Um, it's very important that you detach your value from the value of what you're charging and the value that your clients perceive. Um, I know for a lot of us, we are our business. And so we're tempted to think that our business value is our value. That's not true. Okay. You are infinitely valuable. You cannot be that like literally a price cannot be put on you. And so how can you value something that is infinite and compare it to the monetary reward for performing a service for somebody. And I know, like, uh, we don't talk about that, but that's what's happening in here a lot of times, at least for me. And so if it's happening like that for you, I want to release you from that prison right now. And make sure you understand that you are infinitely valuable, but your services have value. And you don't have to be a commodity. You can price yourself how you want to and how you feel you deserve to. Now, in this context, we're not necessarily talking about pricing, although that is part of it. We're mostly talking about good financial sense. And so there are three pieces to this. First of all, you got to be good with budgeting, okay? You've got to be good with budgeting. And this is one where it's tough because when we think of a budget, there's like different words that come to mind, different thoughts that come to mind. We think of restriction. Um, we think of uh, limitation, we think of forecasting and pre-planning. And really, I'm not talking about any of those things. I'm talking about the freedom to spend within reasonable boundaries that you set for yourself according to the priorities that you currently have. And by the way, if that priority is to start your day with a latte from Starbucks, then mazel tov, right? You should do that 100%. Okay. It's not about saying no to things for the sake of saying no to things because of peer pressure. It's about understanding what's important to you within the confines and the limits of what you can do right now. Now, for us, the way that we handle this is with two uh, frameworks, and that is YNAB, which is You Need a Budget, and Profit First by Mike Michalowicz, okay? Profit First is a book by Mike Michalowicz, and it's a great book for how to organize your small business finances. And then YNAB is both a method and a software um, by that has four rules. And according to those four rules is how you're going to manage your money, and you're going to use the software to actually execute on those four rules. Now, there are multiple ways you could do this. If you love spreadsheets, you could build a spreadsheet. The original uh, YNAB software was actually just a spreadsheet that was sold, and uh, it's a lot more advanced now. Uh, a fair warning, it's a little expensive, and it can be um, – confusing. And by expensive, it's somewhere around 100 bucks a year. So it's not hugely expensive. It's more than worth it. You will save way more than 100 bucks a year if you use it. Um, 
Uh, but then also just, you know, actually getting into it and using it. It's like, it's one of those things where it's really hard for a lot of people to get started with. But once you like really get the hang of it, you become nerdy about it, right? Like there's even a whole podcast that they have called Budget Nerds, you know, and it's like the ultra nerdy stuff. And uh, I would say the probably the majority of people who really let this sink in, they don't use it just casually, right? They use it as a, um, you know, they're really nerdy about it. And so um, while money and budgeting, it's not the funnest thing, uh, they do their best to make it fun. And if this is something that y you like, you know you need, uh, but you need some hand-holding and you're not sure what to do there and you need some help, I do offer a service around this. Um, I have a, a coaching call coming up in just a week or two uh, with a client for this, and so I would be more than happy to have you as well. And it's budget and financial setup and coaching based on YNAB and Profit First. So if you go to steveshram.co slash YNAB, which is Y-N-A-B, you can actually sign up right there for a budget setup session, and you'll just have to go sign up for the software separately, and I will happily walk you through exactly how to set up your business finances. I should also say that I go through the basics of that setup on the in the uh, inside the course at subscriptionwebdesign.com. So if you're a member of that course, um, you can actually go in and see some of how I do this. But if you want me to help you apply it to your personal situation, then we can do a budget and set up a coaching session. That's at steveshramco slash YNAB. Okay, so first, you're going to have to be good with budgeting. Secondly, is you're going to need to think about building a financial runway to getting into subscription web design full time, if that's what you'd like to do. And this is important because if you have a full-time job already and you like that full-time job and you're using this as a side hustle to eventually become something full-time for you, then you, my friend, are in a fantastic situation. It's the situation that I was in. I set myself a five-year goal and I did subscription web design on the side and I built that up to the point where I had the recurring income enough to be able to leave my full-time job, which I did in January of 2021. And it's been a fantastic decision. There's been ups and downs, of course, but um, it's been a, a, to say it's been a net positive is uh, the biggest understatement ever. It's been amazing to have freedom and flexibility over my schedule and Yes, there's times that you work harder and longer hours, but then there's also times when, you know, you take off early to go to your kid's thing or you, you know, you have a long weekend and you didn't have to ask permission. And all of that is really exciting and something that is worth striving for. But you'll have to figure out how to build your financial runway to do that, either with the current clientele that you have or uh, your full-time job, whatever that may be. And one of the tips, and this is actually th the third thing I wanted to talk about today, one of the tips that will help you accelerate your financial runway, is taking on what I call foundation clients, foundation clients, okay? And these are typically going to be one of two things. First of all, they are typically going to be higher level retainers, okay? Higher level retainers. So this will likely be some of the biggest money that you've asked from someone. And there are uh, really two, I mean, there might be more if I thought about it for even longer, but really there are two types of foundation clients that um, that I talk about. And I have a whole uh, blog post on this on uh, at the Subscription Web Design Substack that you can check out uh, about building a financial runway for subscription web design. And I talk about getting foundation clients. And a foundation client is going to be either a white label relationship with another agency who needs your services, or it's going to be ongoing work for a larger client, okay? So maybe there's a client who could use some help with their uh, website and maybe their, you know, email marketing and, and maybe even writing some articles or, you know, somebody that you can do, you know, two to five hours per week of work for and who needs that level of service. And um, this happens. The, the, uh, if you offer this to people, you will find that there are people who need this. There are people who need help managing the technical and sometimes even the creative end of their online web properties, but they don't know who to go to and they're doing it all themselves. And you would be a great person to jump in and fill in that gap. And so if you could take on one to three foundation clients who you're doing consistent white label work for, which means you're working under the brand of their agency or direct client relationships who are bigger clients and they need more help and more work on a regular basis, and you can find one to three clients like that, then you can jump off the dock and fill in the rest with, with your lower level subscription web design clients um, a lot faster and a lot easier. And this is a perfect way to go. 
nothing wrong with this at all. Um, you know, the, the more clients that you have like that, uh, the better. Although one thing you do have to be careful with is um, the lower that your average uh, um, customer per month is, the less it hurts when one leaves, okay? And so it, when a foundation client leaves, it could really hurt your business. Uh, what will probably happen is you will onboard your foundation clients that will give you time to build up your clientele otherwise. And then over time, whenever a foundation client does leave, it will be a big hit, but not as big a hit as you might think because those others will come in and fill in the gap and, and make up the difference. And by the way, that happened to me, okay? My core foundation client, a white label relationship, we've had a great working relationship for a few years now, and um, I still work with them. We still work with them. But we changed our our business model and our relationship uh, with them a little bit uh, because the work had dried up quite a bit, okay, coming from their end. And so uh, we didn't have the large retainer like we used to have, and I won't go into the details of our current uh, of our current really, uh, arrangement because it's different. Um, yeah, but the reality is is that they left. And did it hurt? Uh, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't great. Like they definitely downgraded quite a bit from what they were paying before. But because I had because that bought me the time I needed to build up on the back end with my other subscription web design relationships, um, it didn't hurt as much as it could have. So that's probably something like how it's going to turn out. And of course, if you continue to onboard these foundation clients, then um, then that's even better. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think you're going to find that this is a nice way to help start building that runway so that you can get cash flow coming into the door and uh, be able to actually start offering subscription web design to more and more people. Okay, my friends, that's it for this episode. Again, you got to be good with budgeting. You got to build that runway and you got to look for some foundation clients if you're interested in building that runway. And once you do those things, you'll be set up on the money end. And uh, again, you, you do got to charge what you're worth. Like there's a lot more to it. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the marketing and sales and um, next week. But yeah, it's important that you're actually managing your money well, you know, making sure your processes are streamlined, making sure that you're able to keep money that comes in and saving for a rainy day and all of those important things that come along with budgeting and paying your taxes and all of that fun stuff. Okay. So that's the mindset, the model, and now the money that we've covered. Up next, we're going to talk about the marketing and sales, and that's going to be an exciting episode. So we'll see you on that episode of Subscription Web Design. Catch you later.